Statistics and Excel. Hamlet, Harry Potter, and statistics. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. You're not required to. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. But if you have access to this online OneNote, we're located icon left hand side, OneNote and Excel presentations, presentation number 1010, Hamlet, Harry Potter and statistics. We're also attempting to upload our transcripts to OneNote so that you can then go to the View tab, use the Immersive Reader tool, and if you want to, you can change the language to whatever language you so choose and either read or listen to the transcripts in that language. Desktop version of OneNote here, thinking about how we can organize data so that we can possibly extract some meaning, some information from that data. Now note that of course, when we have different kinds of data and we have different objectives with those data, we're gonna use different tools to organize the data in different ways. However, no matter the objective, no matter the kind of data we have, we would usually like to sort the data in different ways so we can get different angles, different perspectives on that data. Because if we look at something from different angles, we're more likely to get a fuller picture of what is going on than if we look at something from one particular angle. Now, of course, all the angles that we look at might not be equally weighted. There might be one particular angle that we look at that gives a better picture than if we look at something from a different angle. But if we put all the angles together, that's usually gonna be a better, fuller picture than just one particular view. Okay, so here we have Shakespeare's play Hamlet, and what we've done is we've just taken out the words and we've listed uh, the words and how often they appear in the play. Now first, of course, this is just simply to point out that now we have a list of data, a list of words and how often they appear, and clearly in order to make the Shakespeare play of Hamlet, those words have to be ordered in a very particular way. So you would think that the, sh the genius of Shakespeare isn't simply in selecting the words that they use, although that would be important, I would think. But also, there's going to be a great deal of importance on the ordering of the words. If we think of the data as the words, the order of the words is going to be quite important to get to an end result uh, like Hamlet. We couldn't, we couldn't just randomly put these together. Possibly ChatGTP could do it right now at this point in time. But, but you'd have to have some kind of... Uh, intelligence, whether it be artificial or human, to put the words together in order to to make uh, a good poem or play or whatever that we are creating. However, we can also look at this in terms of another way to look at the play of Hamlet, which is often actually useful in different fields of like English and literature, for example, because I mean, if we're able to list all the words that show up and order the words, then we can ask questions like, well, which, which word is more, is it really important that, that Lord was, was the biggest word? Uh, can we pull some meaning from the words that are here? We might be able to say, hey, well, if Lord is the biggest, is the word that's used the most, then possibly, you know, most the, the play, we can kind of guess where the play is going to be set in, in a courtly kind of setting and whatnot, where people, where there's a lot of Lords around and whatnot. Uh, and, you, and then you, again, you can ask the questions, is that, is that a key component? to making a very memorable uh, type of play. And you can go on, you know, different tangents from, from organizing the, the, this information this way. I've also seen an organization of the, the different kind of tropes or rhetorical tools uh, that Shakespeare's use uses as well. And so that's another 
another list that could be quite interesting to look at for people that are trying to uh, hone their own, you know, skills, rhetorical skills and whatnot. They might say, well, how often does, you know, the greatest playwright uh, use these different kind of rhetorical tools and, and why uh, could be interesting. Also, there's also some cases where we don't know who wrote particular things. So oftentimes, like if you look at biblical texts, they, they have questions in terms of who wrote this particular item. Or when we go to like the people that wrote uh, the Federalist Papers and, and whatnot, we don't know who actually wrote particular documents. Sometimes the way they can make an educated guess about that is they can list out the number of words that show up and say, well, th this particular person tends to use these words more or use these rhetorical uh, tricks more uh, than th these phrases more uh, than somebody else. And that can be a way for us to kind of determine who wrote uh, what. So, so even something like, like a play, you know, we can look at it from different angles and we possibly can extract some meaning from it. And it depends what our goal is. What's our goal? If our goal is to say who actually wrote this, because I don't know, then we might sort it in different ways. If our goal is to say, hmm, can I look at this in different ways and try to say what, you know, what, what, what else can I pull to make me a better playwright or something like that? Then again, we might sort the data differently to try to understand, you know, how it's being put together. So uh, if, if, if we take this data, then of course, the first thing what we're going to do, usually if we just counted all the words, it might not be in order at first look, right? It might be random scrambling of words. We might have sorted the words in alphabetical order. But then the next thing you would think you would do with just about any kind of data is to sort the data uh, from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. So in this case, clearly, you would think that we would want the highest word. So we're looking at whatever our objective is, if it's to improve our skills as a poet or to try to figure out who's, who's writing what, is this really written, written by Shakespeare or something, we might first want to, what's, what's the one that's going to be used the most and try to extract, you know, some meaning from that. So that's usually uh, the first thing that we will do. Now, once you have this, it's, it's useful because you can just look at this data and say, okay, I can get some meaning from simply this list of data. But if we had a huge list of data, then it might be more difficult to extract meaning from that data. Therefore, the next step we often do is to create a pictorial representation of the data. And I want to emphasize again and again that the pictorial representation isn't simply dumbing down the data for, for non-statistically non minded people. Because the, the picture is going gonna, is gonna to activate another angle that we're looking at the data. This picture is saying the same thing as this table and I can I can kind of extract the same kind of meaning from this particular data set it's not too complex of a data set but still the picture gives me a better you know a pictorial representation that that is a different angle to look at and it and it, it usually kind of pops out a little bit more with the image and if we have more complex data sets then some data sets the picture clearly is, is the only way we can even comprehend the data to be able to kind of assess what is going on. So now we've got the picture. Now this in Excel is what we call a bar, uh, a bar chart. So it's just your standard bar chart. So what is happening on the X axis, we just have the list of the words and we just listed all of the words. And then on uh, the Y, you've got how many times going up the Y axis, how many times they have shown up. And then clearly when we look at the bars 228, there's the 228. If we go to the look, uh, uh, we've got 49, which is listed down here around that bar, around the 50 bar. So we get a nice pictorial representation. So the bar chart is, is quite nice when you have something on the x-axis that, that we can easily graph on the x-axis. We'll take a look at data later where we have numerical data possibly on an x-axis and it's less easy for us to just use uh, each of these each of these data points as a point on the x-axis axis and that's why we're going to use basically a histogram which is a, can be a little bit confusing because it looks kind of like a bar chart and we can actually create a histogram using the bar chart tool in excel we'll take a look at 
uh, later as well. But just that's the precursor to that. Now, if we did the same thing with other texts like uh, Harry Potter, this is with Harry Potter. These are most frequently used words in the series. Most frequently used words in the series. So I just looked these up, you know, online. They say these are the most frequently wor used words. Now, note that if you if you went in and you counted all the words that show up in Harry Potter, and and you looked at this, you might say, okay, now I've got this this information might not be the most useful because I have a lot of thes, a lot of ands, a lot of twos, a lot of ofs. So you might you might say, hey, I'd like I need to sort my data to be a little bit more restrictive, possibly. Possibly these are not. So now they've they've taken another step and they said display frequency of non-stop words in the whole series. Now I don't want to go into detail on, on non-stop words and what stop words are, but what they did is of course they said they said, hey, look, I want to pull this particular data to get some particular meaning about Harry Potter, possibly the writing style uh, for Harry Potter, possibly someone's trying to mimic maybe the writing style for Harry Potter to have a similar success with it or something like that. And they pulled this information and they say, eh, you know, maybe that's maybe these words aren't helping me with my objective as much. What if I try to come up with a term of saying, I'm going to look at this data set and try to determine non uh, non stop words and try to extract those particular words and possibly then I'll get a set of words that are more meaningful. So you can see how they're using techniques here to to trim down the data set according to the objectives that are that are in that we have. So here so the same thing would happen. We would want to sort the words possibly by the frequency how often they show up. This is just another format of the bar chart. So we did the same thing. We've got the list of words here. And then instead of having the bar chart with the X axis having the words and then the count on the Y, now we've got the X axis having the count of the words and the, the, uh, the words on the Y. So now, of course, this one is for the is the highest count of the 51 that lines up this way. So uh, when we're working in Excel, we can do this fairly easily. We can, you know, change. And clearly when we're looking at these kind of charts, there's a couple objectives usually. One objective is how can we look at pictorially so that we can get m more meaning from it. And then when you're looking at it from a presentation standpoint, you're trying to give this data to somebody else. Then sometimes there's another objective, of course, of can I make this a little bit more appealing possibly changing the colors just for the appeal of it, possibly changing it from a bar chart that's more standard that, pos that people have seen more often to, to turn it on its side so that it doesn't you know, remove any information from the data, but is more visually appealing or at least different maybe. So same thing here. Now we took the, the, these words out and this was their count without those words. We made another chart with it and we just you know, have a different color with it now, which is, these are things you can do in Excel, which we'll practice if you go to the Excel side of things uh, and we'll build this one as well. Obviously, if we look at this word count, we see the names are used, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, Looked, Professor, Hagrid, Time, Wand, Eyes. So it's an interesting list. I'm not sure exactly what I would uh, <laughs> pull from that, but uh, uh, clearly, there's a lot of conversations where they talk to each other and they like to say each other's name, I guess. So when you when you talk in a novel, you have to mention when they're talking to each other, the people's names a bunch of times. I don't know. I don't know what you extract from that. I'm not a, I'm not a novelist. 